Yeah, no, we, uh, we didn't really get the schedule. Listen, we've gone from R to M, uh -huh. just bringing it down to a very base level, and now we're going to elevate it to a much classier platform. R S K. Exactly. I can't do the letters. I can say the name. It's Gabriella Ruth and Samantha. Very um, strong crush on Rachel. Woo! 
And so she, I always, she'll, she used to always come to conventions and she'd be wearing something very sexy. And I'd always be like, hi, how is your day? And she'd be like, it's okay, you can say something. So I try not to overdo it. But um, she was on an episode of Sex and the City. I don't know if anybody watched that show. I watched it. Uh, or did and do. But anyway, every time I usually rewatch that show once a year, and uh, every time our episode comes on, I always text her going, What do you think? I'm some kind of Lewinsky? Because in that episode, she's a very like straight laced young virgin, doesn't want to have sex, which I don't know is actually Rachel to a T. I don't speak for her, but um, she, she always lets me um, like coo on her a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I got some them sexy Rachel Tight stories yeah. and things. She once sent me a dress in the post that's very funny, which I really appreciate. Um, I actually just caught up with her um, in the uh, FaceTime. Um, we scheduled it because we were quite like uh, scheduled, scheduled time, time because, and we ended up leathered for like an hour and a half. And the thing that I always forget about Rachel because I know her from now is like she's such a back history, like she's been in the business since she was four and she's actually one of the best people ever to ask advice about about things in the industry and I had a little thing from the lawyer and I just mentioned it to her and of course she has this amazing perspective, intense stories, involving people far more successful <laughs> than me, you know, it was really amazing, so it's not really, it's not really that interesting a story but just to say that I always, she's just so rich isn't she, she's just so rich in her past and in her present, and she's one of my favorite people on the planet, absolutely. Love her. <laughs> she's very wise and, and, and zen. Truly loves it. <laughs> Truly loves it. Um, the, the thing that comes to mind first is I met her later on. Most, most people have already known her for some reason. I never come across each other, we didn't come across each other, um, until about, actually I don't know how long ago it was, but I, I remember seeing a trail of litter, <laughs> and I was really confused with it, I was like, what? And it was, all, it was in, in the green room, it was on the chairs, and I was like, and then she came in and she was just like, oh, hi. And I was like, that is how she beats you. Like, like you are the person she's been waiting to meet her whole life. And she's covered in clear. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And we were like instantly peas and carrots. We're like, oh. And you just, you just want to. And, she, and I think that this glitter is because that's how sparkly she is on the inside. And it's like not a choice. She just has to be on the outside. <laughs> She's a little magic. I remember sometimes you could just be in the green room sitting there and she would look at you and go, How are you? <laughs> just start crying. <laughs> within a five foot radius of Rachel and I in a conversation. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> it's just a gravitational, we're both like, uh-huh, 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 let's just sit and ballistically feel at each other <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you send Rachel this. Yeah. I really love her. Yeah. We love you, Rachel. We love you, Rachel. We miss you.
and film industry can have a tendency to become a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. And what really I crave both to, to act in and to consume is original, often fucked up, psychological experiences. So study psychology, study history, study archaeology, study fucking dinosaurs. Not fucking dinosaurs. That's <laughs> and the tapestry that you want to weave, as opposed to, the industry will always exist, and learning about it will be unique to you. But if you understand storytelling from a human place, or, or dinosaur place, I, again, I don't know here, um, I think it will serve you better than stopping and trying to study what's already been created. You want to create something new. That's what we're hungry for. Remember that time? 
So many years ago, I was working in a small town in Oregon, and a friend of mine were out for a little dinner and a walk in a big park, and I saw a dog run past in the park, and it was in distress. And I was like, that dog doesn't have anybody with it. <sighs> I have to go catch that dog. And she's like, no, I'm sure somebody's with it. Look at it, it's very well done. I'm like, no, I have to go catch that dog. She's like, I mean, it's fine. It's a guy. I was like, I have to go catch that dog. So I go and I catch the dog, and it's not, like, it's in distress, but it's well taken care of. So it's got a phone number on its collar, and I go to a pay phone. <laughs> I don't know, those are phones that used to be in the middle of nowhere that literally anybody could use. Money into it. You put money into it in the form of, of change. That's round. These smells are filler and metallic. Uh, Superman, you can Superman in them. Currency. Um, anywho, I uh, called the number and was like, I think I have your dog here in like, the apartment. And they're like, no, 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 the dog's in the backyard. And I said, could you please check? And seconds later, this woman comes back and she's sobbing. She's like, it's my dog, he's deaf. He's deaf and he can't, he's really, can you please just keep him? I'll be right there, I'll be right there with it. And I'm like, oh, I was right, he was behaving. Yeah, I'll stay here. And she and her daughter come running up and they tearfully thank me for getting their dog and they go home. And the gal that I was with looks at me and she goes, oh my God, you are somebody. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. What the fuck do you mean by that? Um, she goes, I see things like that and I always think, Oh, somebody will take care of that. Aww. You're somebody. And I think Jody and I are reluctantly, like, it is never my first impulse to be, ah, oh, I've got it. My first impulse is always, yeah. somebody will make that. <laughs> I somebody will make that. You no, know, I always look for somebody before I'm with somebody, but nine times out of ten, I'm like, I'm the fucking somebody again. All right, here we go. Come here, pig. Coyotes are gonna eat ya. Go back in your pen. Um, so that I think we have similarly. What we have difference is I think Jody's uh, sense of right and wrong and good and evil is very black and white. Which, which it has to be when you're a hunter because that's been her experience. And mine is much more. I'd like to see your perspective before I judge you as being evil. Share more. Okay, now fuck off your email. It takes me a couple seconds before I want to stab somebody in the head. I, uh, I'm just exactly the same. Next. <laughs> I want to answer the other question of what were you late to about your character? I was late. I want to tell the truth. Uh, I shouldn't have done it. Uh, I was late to the witch element. I just really saw Rowena as a survivor and this amazing woman who's good at what she does. And then the witchcraft stuff grew on me. As I think it was growing on the general population, witches were kind of popping up everywhere in popular culture as Rowena continued. So that kind of grew on me, and I'm really glad because now I'm full, full, full of witch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I do love my shows, there's no difference. <laughs> <laughs> she does love them in her own. She doesn't like it, but she does. We both love them. Yeah. Hi, good morning. My name is Adelaine and I'm from Brazil. Um, first of all, you guys are awesome. I am deeply in love for you and thank you for making the show so special. Um, the question I have is, would you please share um, one of the funniest and or favorite moments during the set while you guys were all together? Well, we've Not never all been together at, on set. Okay, I mean, when you got When we were on, on set. set. Yes, thank you. Every morning, by the end of filming, uh, they would know to bring me a steak sandwich. Every <laughs> morning, fresh bread, good steak, coffee. Um, that was my morning on set. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I got eggs. <laughs> and they had um, 
They always have my magical rose tea, the rose tea for me. That's pretty awesome. Crafty is awesome. It's awesome. One of the best crafties in the city, by far, by far. And caterer and, and yeah. all of it. Yeah. Remember if I used to bring in a grilled cheese truck? Uh, ice cream truck. Years ago, I had a food truck called Rhea Barbecue. I've had many, many careers in my lifetime. And Phil hired my truck to come on set. Yeah. It was like my first, after my first episode, maybe second episode. Anyway, yeah, that was, he's very sweet. Phil is, I'm not gonna, t I'm not gonna answer your question. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> no, but I think it's because it's clearly yes. become food, or is it because my, my answer is also food? Time. Two o'clock at yes, time. I was gonna be Two o'clock at time. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. No, 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 that's it. Tell, no. I'm gonna tell Phil. <laughs> Phil is like, has been in the industry, Phil Segrecia has been in the industry for so, so long. And he has no pomp about him. Like, there's nothing that's Hollywood about him. He appreciates hard work. He doesn't put up with bullshit. Um, and he likes people who are skilled, talented, and yes. And he takes things personally. Yeah. Which to me is a good thing. Because if there's somebody, oh, there's the tears. There's so often that I hear, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal. I'm like, fuck you. You mean it's not personal to you? My heart just broke. Fuck off. <laughs> and Phil is one of the few on the other side that still will let his heart break. And I fucking love that. I'm not ashamed of it. And then, yeah, there's a few of the people on there that I would follow to the ends of the earth because of that. So I interrupted you. I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just going to say that he's one of the people, like, I went for breakfast with him when I was in Toronto. He was in Toronto working on the boys, and we were in Toronto for a convention. We went for breakfast to a little diner, and he knew every single person's name who worked there, and he knew what they did outside of serving and cooking, and he had been, if they were musicians, he had been to their gigs. If they were artists, he had been to their shows. He had brought people to their shows. And I was like, these are the kind of people that I want to surround myself with in this business because they're good at what they do. They've been in the industry for a long time and it's not because of who they pretend to be or know. It's who they are. Um, so, he's amazing. Richard Sweet, um, just in case you're, some people don't know exactly who Phil Sarisha is, and within the show context, Richard Sweet, you know if um, the showrunner is Zeus, like uh, Andrew Dabb Zeus, uh, Phil Sarisha is Poseidon. Oh, yes! Yeah. Because he governs everything that's to do with editing, all the real hard work, the practical stuff, he pulls everything together. And he, nobody knows, apart from Kevin Parks, nobody knows more about the show, the backstories, the characters, all of that, right? It's well, and he's really, in, he was also very integral to continue that metaphor with shaping the landscape, which is what the ocean does, right? You're welcome! Oh, no! <laughs> The cookie store, okay. Uh, so Fred, what was Fred's last name? Ewanick. Fred Ewanick was, so you are from Canada, Fred Ewanick is actually a giant star, was on a so, very big hit show called Corner Jazz. Yeah. So this is one of my, so, so him in 911, Brianna and I bonded quickly over two o'clock cookie time. At two o'clock cookie time, we just go get cookies at two. And, uh, and coffee. And coffee, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, cookies, cookies at two. Um, and Fred came with us one time and was like, can, can, can anybody have some of that? And we were like, yeah, he goes, I can have a hard boiled egg. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you can have, and he went, I said, you can have anything you want. And with the glee of a child on Christmas who got a pony, he says, I could have two hard boiled eggs. <laughs> And that is one of my favorite moments because we, we our cookie our we were like well, we're like oh they're eating like bags of free food and we're like yeah help yourself son it's on the house. <laughs> you are sorry that doesn't answer your question. I hope you have some good stories in there. Thank you for coming. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Great. How are you? So right yeah, I'm just kidding. Never. <laughs> Right now I'm actually a film student. Right now we're kind of going over wardrobe and outfits for different shoots that we're doing right now. 
What, in your opinion, I know that most of have had very drastic changes in their outfits over the seasons. I know specifically Mary, I know you had a conversation when you went from the gown to your actual, when you started changing out the outfits. What to you was like the most important or like the best outfit you had on that show? My coat. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, it was Victoria, because there was like pictures, people outside pictures yesterday of some of them were in uniform. All of, I was only in uniform until Wayward Sisters. And then I wore the brown um, coat, Sherilyn coat. And I have that coat in my closet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so she was like, I associate you more with that coat than the, your uniform. Um, but I don't have many other questions. <laughs> but that coat, I think, is, for me, is pretty iconic more than anything. Um, for me, it was really important um, to feel grounded, and the way I was going to do that was through my feet. And I, and I came in, and they had really cute, like, uh, tapered, like, tight jeans, and cute little leather jackets, and all this stuff, and I was like, Oh, oh, and the boots were like lace-up with a little heel. Like leather and little lace-up boots. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, I need like Timberlands and the baggy pants and an army jacket. <laughs> I was like, you can name the, name it Lady D. <laughs> and, um, and then I said, you know, actually I think it's, Motorcycle boots is something that you need. So I had I started out with Timberlands because in the in the pilot, in that first episode, Dean supposedly takes her shopping. I'm like, I think that means breaking into the back door of the sporting goods store. <laughs> and I was like, there's not gonna be like he's gonna get me army clothes. <laughs> there's probably the army supply store, right? So so that helped me feel suddenly like in this world and um, grounded. And I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, I would go to a lawyer on set and I'd look, I spilled my sandwich and I'm wrinkled. She's like, good. <laughs> and I was like, yup. <laughs> so much of my life and my career, I'm playing the nice lady. And I'm like, eating lunch like this. <laughs> With like, someone covering me so I don't spill. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> yes. I, I've probably spent more time in the costume department than anybody else on the show, I would have ventured, because what happens with a character like that is you have to go in early on every single episode and try on a bunch of stuff to find a few things that work. And from the very first episode, they have a lot of kind of quintessential like American lady dresses with like sleeveless and like knee length. Lady, do you know what I mean? Like luncheon dresses. Uh -huh. And I, I just was like, mm. and um, Kerry, I could see Kerry one who the, 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 I could see her seeing, like I, I could see her adjusting as I was in the room the first time, and we found an off-the-shoulder black ruffled thing that was just a bit slinkier and a bit more angelic and boosting or something. Yeah, and then we went on such a journey until eventually Eugenie got tired of my dresses and wrote in that I had to wear a pantsuit. Which was awesome, because I really loved wearing those too. And um, it, it paid off so well that when I got to go and do the one episode of the Winchesters I got to do, Kenny sent me a couple of pictures, asked me a couple of questions, and I turned up, because there was no time, I had to turn up in the day I was shooting. They made that dress from scratch, which was perfect. Isn't that amazing? But in a different, like in New Orleans. So I'm super grateful to the costume board of department because they helped build my character. It was part of who she was. It means everything. It means everything. How I feel and what I'm wearing. It means everything. Isn't it? When you're getting into your character, putting on the clothes is like that's how that character, that's how that person dresses. It's it's crucial. I wore flannel. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, first, I'd like to say uh, thank you to all of you ladies on stage. You're amazing actors. Uh, who's your favorite? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't answer that. 
keep going. I have kids, I don't think they were. Um, but I will say, I was at the Wayward Podcast yesterday, and thank you for the conversation. It was so deep and meaningful. Um, I really took a, a big message to take home with me. That was kind of awesome. Thank you, thank you for being there. But I will say my question today is for Ruth because Rowena is a character that just speaks to me. And uh, so I have two questions for Ruth. One is, what do you think Rowena's astrological sign is? And two, you ever never thought of that? Oh, I, think, I, I know what I think it is. And two, um, we got to see glimpses of what hell looks like when she was queen. But I want to know from you, what changes did Rowena make when she got to take oh. over? Oh. Uh, all, all I can tell you is that Rowena's in hell, making hell great again. <laughs> she's a fucking boss. And she saw her son not do as well as she thought she could do it, so now she's just, she's running rampage. And she's doing Women do better. <laughs> Of just thinking about it, because I'm quite deep into astrology, I mean, the obvious one is Scorpio. <laughs> Scorpio, here's the thing, with like a fire sign rising, like Sagittarius rising, weirdly, weirdly with a moon in Cancer. <laughs> I want to say Capricorn. Capricorn, Cancer. Really? Practical and the boss and like getting But also the climate. Her Mars is in Capricorn. Her Mars is in Capricorn. Oh, there you go. Yes. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I would say I would say her Venus is in Cancer because then she's like, no. But that's really like how she like loves people, but then she doesn't want to show it as much. What do you, what are your three? Me. Mine are Aries and Sun. Aries 29 degrees. You can't get more Aries. Um, my rising sign is Virgo, and which is a contradiction in terms. And then my moon is in Leo, but I think it's a contradiction is in the 12th house. The, end of, the then I'm always like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If anybody wants me to look at the charts, I will. I'm really into it. <laughs> I know it's really good. It's really good. Yeah, I love, a, I love a Scorpio. And think about it. Yeah. It's not obvious. Yeah. They're so loyal, those Scorpios. They're so, so loyal. Daddy will see it. No, <laughs> your sun sign is who you are at your core, but your rising sign is who you present to everybody else. So it depends. Your rising, yes. See, that makes sense. Yeah. I have so much Cancer in my chart. So much Cancer and Libra. I'm like all yeah. Cancer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Libra. Portion of generals in the U.S. Army are Libra. Libra, yeah, that makes sense. Hmm, right. And because Libras are like Jason Manns is a Libra. And he's been, well, let's look at both sides, you know, like the very Libra. Also, love to adorn and all that. Anyway, uh, sorry, I used your question. <laughs> Forget what we're talking about. We're astrology. It's that. Yeah, Rowena right. really, really sells a place you want to go with us and see you. <laughs> just so much to do another episode where I'm just swanning about being a total bitch. <laughs> Hi. Hi, my name is Erin and my question is, what did Jared and Jensen do to make you comfortable upset? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really do it. <laughs> I told the story before, my first scene uh, working with the boys was the donut scene, and I was very nervous about it, but I was, also, I was six months pregnant, so uh, I was very excited to eat donuts. And that was kind of the joke, and I was really nervous, and so they were explaining to me, they're like, you just can just take a bite, and then we all cut, you spit it out. I was like, I'm not gonna spit this out, it's a donut! Eight donuts later. Um, anyway, so Jensen, as we were both eating the donuts in the scene, there was a spit bucket, and he would always let me spit first. <laughs> a couple of cons ago, somebody said they were going to get a t-shirt that said, Jensen, let me spit first! <laughs> Sounds sexier than I meant it to. Nobody else? Thank you so much. Have a great day.
Jess, Jess was my first director, and he, he runs a really quiet set. It's really sweet and peaceful. And um, I walked in, and I heard Moira, I don't know her name is Moira, walk past me, and I heard Moira say, she's tiny. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm here, though. I'm here, I'm tiny, and I had to put a booster under my seat. And, uh, and uh, Jensen stood in front of me with um, some stairs, and he looked at me and just was like, another redhead. <laughs> He didn't know, he didn't know I was going to be around, or I didn't know I was going to be around, or whatever. He took the time and asked me about Scotland, and it was so lovely. And I met Jared in the supermarket. <laughs> and I had a bad cold, um, but the gen was there, I think they're from. And um, then they remembered me when I got to the, three, the 200th party. Right. They're so sweet. They're the lovely, they're the, the most welcoming uh, principal actors on a set, and it doesn't happen all the time. It really doesn't. You hear in our industry, they, they go out of their way, and that's why this exists. This is why this all exists, I think. Anyway. Hi, I'm Jamelin, and I adore all of you. My question today is for Sam. I'm also a huge Star Trek fan, so I was wondering if you could talk about being in the pilot of Strange New Worlds, and also your voice work on Prodigy. Um, well, so I'm, my friend Akiva, Akiva Goldsman, run, is now like, sort of in charge of the Star Trek universe. And he and Davey Perez, the writer from Supernatural, wrote this part for me. And I thought they were just gonna, you know, it was like a little, just something fun, so I got to be on Star Trek. And I auditioned for it, not realizing it was the same role, and I was like, oh, she's queen of the planet! <laughs> They don't send out the real sides, right? And it turned out I was actually, I was, I was a president. So I was like an elected official. Um, and I, as an actor, most, I think most of us, like getting to play some sort of fantasy character is, was like total bucket list for me. Like, and when they called and said, do you, do you, would you mind if we do like prosthetics and stuff? And I was like, how? Dare you even ask me that? <laughs> I won't be on your show unless I get to have prosthetics. <laughs> Did not quite understand the process. <laughs> I don't regret it, but wow. Um, there was face fittings. There were eyeball fittings. Because um, I had giant contacts. Um, I had to drive out to deep in the valley to Legacy Studios where they do all of Star Trek. I got the whole thing. Um, Baby Yoda. <laughs> they would not let me take a picture. They're like, just save it in your brain. Like, no! <laughs> but they had all of them in. Lauren, they had all of the um, Iron Man suits. They do all Marvel. Like, I was walking around. They're like, oh, here, do you want to come into this?
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they do like the reality of it all. Um, anyway, I just, it was just a dream to be on, on, on such an iconic thing. You know, I, I, I had two scenes or something, and people will come find me at Comic Cons. I'm like, I loved it. Really? <laughs> Kim, was, Kim was on Star Trek. I was on Voyager. Oh, oh, what was this? That's Star Trek. Lots of, I was there uh, Emmy nomination makeup that year. Yeah. Oh. And you just you feel like part of a club, right? It's like I danced on the transporter. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's just it's just one of those things like you just like stick it in your pocket and keep it. We'll get there, Brianna. We'll get on Star Trek. Fuck it, I don't give a shit. <laughs>